The question is, Dave, do we draw down because of just their straight vanilla and tough recession that we're heading into? Or do we have another credit event? Does the, the does a bank, a big bank collapse that has counterparty risk that, you know, that induces in contagion that they have to contain if they have to step in like they did with Silicon Valley? Well, then it's a whole nother story. And we're seeing these backdoor, you know, injections of liquidity from the Fed to make sure that the market operates properly. And that's kind of propping everything up right now. So if something does happen, all bets are off. Renowned macro analyst and author of the informationist newsletter James Lavish believes there are lots of macro headwinds ahead for the U.S. and the overall global economy within the next few months. According to Lavish, the chances of a recession in the United States and almost all other G7 countries is almost 100%. With the developed world either already in a recession or just about to hit one, Lavish is certain that the global economy and markets will have to shoulder some serious hits within the coming months despite recent price gains. Using the U.S. stock markets as an example, Lavish explains that SMP is giving investors a false projection as a result of the ongoing artificial intelligence hype. When that bubble comes crumbling, investors will be able to ascertain the true health of the stock market index as it will continue to get battered by the coming economic challenges. Of course, when the storms begin to hit, whether it's from the recession, a liquidity crisis, the AM bubble burst, or a combination of these factors, everything including cryptocurrency prices will be affected. Lavish details his predictions and assessment of the current macro environment in a recent discussion with Scott Melker, Dave Weisberger, and Bloomberg analyst Mike McGlone. He begins by recounting the expected consequences of the U.S. Treasury and Federal Reserve's double liquidity tightening efforts. While the central bank is pulling liquidity to lower inflation, the Treasury is trying to refill its coffers. By Lavish's estimates, at least $500 billion will be needed to refill the Treasury general account. And since the Treasury is issuing short-term T-bills, the whole process will need to be repeated in almost no time. According to Lavish, all of these activities will place more burden on the already strained economy, especially the banking sector, which is taking the brunt of the double-sided liquidity pull. We will now bring you clips from the insightful discussion as Lavish highlights and analyzes what he believes lies ahead for the U.S. economy and markets in the coming months. Please watch, share, and like this video. Also, ensure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Thanks and enjoy the video. <clears throat> the Treasury's done a good job of issuing hundreds of billions of dollars worth of, of short-term T-bills in the last uh, few weeks. They had to refill the TGA. We all know this. The debt ceiling was cleared uh, and the the treasury had spent all its money and so they literally had no money in their checking account they had to they had to they have to refill it back up by to the tune of just the tga they have to refill it by half a trillion dollars and so where do they get that money from now well, they've got to float treasuries and they're they're floating them and they're doing they're doing an exceptional job of draining the uh reverse repo um facility by taking hundreds of billions of dollars out of there but that Remember, these T-bills are very short term, right? They're, they're, they're a few days to a, a couple of months or a few months old uh, maturity. And so they have to redo it again. So this is going to be this perpetual thing where we're just continually going in to tap the market, tap the market, tap the market. And, uh, and they are. They're drawing liquidity out. You, the, the only other place this is coming from, re the really large access of capital is the bank reserves. And that's pulling liquidity out. So on one hand... You can argue today that just on this one facility, like just this one part of the market, they're they're taking money that's sitting idle on the on the sidelines from the reverse repo market. Right. It's just sitting there collecting interest for the banks. On the other hand, they are having to take some liquidity out of the reserves, which is definitely tightening. And then there, you know, the Fed has been saying all along, look, we need to uh, we we need to pull our balance sheet down from all of the QE that we've done from 2020 to, and that's to uh, the tune of $95 billion a month. So they're saying that they're, they're, uh, they're tightening, but then just like Mike said, on the flip side, they're only going to be able to do this for so long because we are going to, we're, we're headed straight into a recession. They know it. They, they, you know, the fed talks around this and talks around it and talks about how unemployment is is historically low it you know we're still not seeing a rise in unemployment 
And so the economy's fine and they're going to continue to gaslight the American public until we hit the recession, unemployment spikes. And uh, and then just like Mike said, all markets sell off and they correlate to one. We have not decoupled fully from the risk on asset uh, narrative for like Dave is saying, the narrative for Bitcoin, it's reality, you know. That's why, and that's exactly why I launched this fund is I think there's going to be a ton of opportunity still. There, like, there, there's going to be another wipeout here, in my opinion. Do we hit the lows? I, I, I think we've already, I honestly, I do believe I we've already it. touched the lows. I don't think we go back there. But there will be volatility. And like Mike said, like we're, we're going to see a drawdown in the markets. Bitcoin, I would be shocked if it does not lead that, uh, lead that way down again. Um, whether or not we have a V recovery, that's up to the Fed uh, and how bad it is. It's, it's whether we have a credit event or whether we just slide into a recession, right? If we have a credit event, the Fed's going to step in quickly because it has to make sure that the, the treasury market remains liquid. But if it's just the, your, your plain vanilla hard recession, it's, it's going to drag down. And that's reality. But the good news is that BlackRock and Fidelity and all these huge firms cannot deny it. And they are realizing this is going to be a place that people want to store their money. And so uh, we're we're waiting for that. And we've got to survive the storm. And and uh, so I'm careful. I'm just I'm just being careful here. You know, Lavish is predicting a mode rate to severe recession that will sweep through the economy and negatively impact asset prices for a significant period. Since the Fed has so far remained adamant about cutting rates, Lavish and McGlone believe there's no reason to expect the central bank to come to the market's aid as soon as the storm hits. But there is an important factor that Lavish believes could incentivize the Federal Reserve to turn on the printers and come to the market's rescue. According to the self-described reformed hedge fund manager, the Fed will have no choice but to cut rates and resume quantitative easing if the recession deepens into a full-blown liquidity crisis. I think that uh, as long as the Treasury market is not impaired, impacted, uh, endangered, you know, liquidity there. They don't care about the stock market because the, the Fed is the Fed doesn't care what the Treasury has to do as far as their their budget is concerned. And if 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 uh, if it means that tax receipts are going to be lower, that's not the Fed's problem. I mean, it's literally not the Fed's problem. They're like, we have to get inflation. Down. That's our, our job is to get inflation down. The Treasury's job is to manage the amount of money that Congress is spending. That's up to them. That's not our issue. So it but the Fed's job is also to make sure that markets operate uh, properly. Right. So there's no there. They have to be liquid. And so the question is, Dave, do we draw down because of just their straight vanilla tough recession that we're heading into? Or do we have another credit event? Does the, the does a, a bank, a big bank collapse that has counterparty risk that you know, that induces in contagion that they have to contain. If they have to step in like they did with Silicon Valley, well, then it's a whole nother story. And we're seeing these backdoor, you know, injections of liquidity from the Fed to make sure that the market operates properly. And that's kind of propping everything up right now. So if something does happen, all bets are off. Remember who's trading those futures, right? Those, those uh, Fed funds futures. And uh, and who's they you know hedge funds use it as a, a way to hedge themselves and uh, so that's it, it, it there is some noise in there for sure Mike um, we we both know that yeah if you want to look at if you really want to get boil it down just to the essence of it just look at the spreads in the treasuries just look at the spreads of the two year and the ten year because that's 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 Big reality inverted. you know. And that just tells us we, there is it is basically a hundred percent probability that we are going to hit a recession here, one hundred percent, and th that means these rates are coming down. Period. And the rates don't come down except for when the Fed feels they need to loosen the reins on the economy and uh, and and you know allow for more liquidity. Every single I just wrote about this this past weekend uh, in, in my newsletter. The 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 out of the G seven Treasury yields. Every single one is inverted, except for which one? Japan, right? No surprise, surprise. Yes. And they're and they're manipulating their 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 central bank is manipulating their their rates. I mean, horrifically, right? So, 
but every single one of them is is seriously inverted on the two and ten. It's just reality. And the only one that it that actually has a bump that goes back up is Italy. And that's because people are worried about them defaulting. So they demand a higher yield for the 10 year. It's just, yeah. So we're the, the, the developed world is heading into a recession. Yeah. James Lavish believes the US economy faces the almost certain risk of recession. According to the macro analysts, there is a hundred percent chance that the United States economy will slip into a recession before the end of 2024. However, there is also the risk of a liquidity crisis and another banking sector contagion. The macro analyst succinctly makes the case for another banking sector crisis in a recent Twitter thread. In the thread, Lavish vividly describes the brewing crisis in the commercial real estate or CRE market, a multi-sector industry that accounts for office, retail, industrial, multifamily property, hospitality, and special purpose commercial property. In his tweets, Lavish explains that while the real estate sector is known to bounce back even after recessions, the CRE market has some nuances that can affect its health, unlike the housing market. One of those nuances, as identified by Lavish, is an occupancy problem, mainly stemming from the world's newly adapted work-from-home craze. As a result, the national vacancy rate for offices in the first quarter of 2022 was 16.8%. Lavish also gives the example of San Francisco, which recorded an office vacancy rate of 29.4%, a record high for a city that until 2020 always recorded a 100% occupancy rate. Lavish also quotes a NYU and Columbian University study which estimates that the overall value destruction of the U.S. office sector could reach over $500 billion by 2029. The burden will, of course, fall on the banking sector. Here are some tweets from the thread. As office valuations fall, we must ask the question, how does that affect the owner of that building, the landlord? It's not like a house, where if the value falls, so be it. Many landlords use floating rate debt to finance office buildings and so their borrowing costs have begun to skyrocket and many fixed rate borrowers are facing maturity on that debt and will have to finance at much higher rates. The answer for an increasing number of them. Just walk away from the property, eat the one-time loss, and move on. Lavish cites three significant examples of this happening in the past few weeks. CRE owners walking out on hundreds of millions of mortgage payments because of the high interest rate environment and rapidly increasing occupancy problems. Lavish continues by describing how the burden will now fall on regional banks, which held over 50% of total CRE debt outstanding as of the fourth quarter of 2022. Here are more tweets from the thread. By TREP's estimates, $448 billion of CRE loans mature in 2023, of which $270 billion are from banks and an eye-watering $2.56 trillion are maturing in the next 42 months. $1.4 trillion of these loans are from banks. And so, with already depleted reserves from poorly managed and underperforming reserve assets and now melting loan portfolios, the reckoning part two may be coming to a regional bank near you. Bottom line, there's an extremely high likelihood that a number of regional banks will feel the pending credit crunch and this is not even considering a coming recession. Then the real question becomes, just how severe does this credit crunch get, and will we see that other big bad C-word contagion? If it all leads to a contagion, Lavish is certain that the Treasury and Fed will come swapping back to the rescue by firing up the money printer, monetizing debt, and injecting liquidity back into the markets to again save the fragile financial system. To protect yourself against whatever is coming, Lavish says to hold some cash in an FDIC-insured account so you can take advantage of any resulting market weakness as soon as the economy slips into a recession. He also urges people to invest in hard assets like gold, silver, and Bitcoin, which will undoubtedly perform well during periods of QE. What are your thoughts on James Lavish's insightful analysis and assessment of the health of the United States economy? Please drop your comments and observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos. Thanks for watching.